Welcome to BET's Black Coffee. I'm Mark Lamont Hill alongside Gia Peppers and Jameer Pond is back. Hey, but I'm always here. <laughs> like you say back, like you don't expect me to be here for some reason. I don't know. My, my letter writing campaign has not worked. <laughs> and our special guest today oh, is a young playwright. You might not know yet, but you will. He's a okay. genius. His new production, <laughs> Slave Play, explores race, sex, and class in a way that's never been done on Broadway before. And it has the entire theater world buzzing. So I want to give a warm welcome to the play Right, the man, the myth, the legend, Jeremy. Oh, the O stands for outstanding. Harris. Hey! Yes. Hey. Jeremy, outstanding. Life yeah. is a traffic jam. Yeah. Yeah. What, 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 so your mama don't get mad at me. What does the O actually stand for? Oh, the O stands for O'Brien, and it's like okay. not her. It's my it's my uncle's like uh, middle name for me. He gave me the same middle name as he gave his oldest son, uh. and all of them have O apostrophe last nice. names. No, oh, you have an Irish background. Um, sort of, like, you know, I have a, like, you know, like, this is topical, a slave background, and ah. I think he was very interested in, like, all these Irish people who had, like, O names mm. in and around our area. Mm. So, before 21, uh, 23 and me, he just sort of, like, <laughs> like he was, like, impressed it upon his children, like, this is where you think you come from. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and next thing you know, slave play. <laughs> exactly. Hey, exactly. I love it. I love it. wonder why I'm doing it. <laughs> Everybody, Black Coffee family, remember to subscribe to the YouTube channel so you can watch all of our episodes, including this awesome one. You can also use the hashtag Black Coffee Live whenever you want to that way you can send in comments or questions so so much is going on in the world right mm -hmm. now I, I i just want to talk to y'all about a couple things okay okay, okay. Yeah, yesterday i briefly mentioned it in my in my open but aisha curry mm -hmm. she i swear to god gets attacked <laughs> for breathing for breathing yep. yeah like black twitter is like waiting for her to do yeah. something so she she showed a video um, of her Millie, Millie rock, rocking, you know, so bad. And Stop. I'm sorry. <laughs> we, nice. Can we acknowledge how bad it was? Though it, it, it was <laughs> some people can't dance. Yeah, like, can you dance? Good. Can you? I can ask. Okay, dance. the teacher. <laughs> I would, I would, if, if Aisha Curry wanted to learn a Millie Rock from me, I would teach her. Also, was, who's to say what is good dancing and what's bad dancing, right? Like, I think that, Brooklyn. like, we have to... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's actually not a bad answer. There, there's an argument for... Uh, my Millie Rock is trash, right? Yeah. So I don't make a I video! I believe that. I believe that. <laughs> Thank you, Jim. Wow. But, I don't make a, but I don't make a video and post, and post, it. And post it. So, so I get the argument for why people are critical. But who cares? She's having fun with That's Steph. That's what I'm saying. Like, it's not my Guys. business. Now, sometimes Steph, I mean, excuse me, sometimes uh, Aisha Curry says things yes. that I find problematic, a little judgmental, a little overly conservative for my taste in terms right. of how people should dress and what they should wear. So I get some of this stuff. But then when she's on Red Table Talk and she's just talking about, you know, how she feels and the insecurity she feels in her relationship, let that girl live. Let that girl live. But she just danced. <laughs> right. It wasn't sturdy, though. Can we all acknowledge how... <laughs> Why are you she said it the was... Millie Rock. <laughs> it was like sturdy. not sturdy. It was, you know, like you gotta have it sturdy. If you gonna do it, you do it sturdily. But where do you think Aisha Curry and Steph have gone in the past few years with their uh, level of celebrity where they have sturdy Millie Rocks? Brooklyn. No, they, play, they, they play the next. No. They play the next twice a year. They play the next yeah. twice, they play the next twice, twice a year. What do you think they're going to Woodland after? Do you have a drink? <laughs> no. Family no. reunions they're only. No. They're going to family reunions <laughs> only, and everyone is very Jack and Jill. I believe that's that is true. Like. And that's, that's and, you know, like. and I think that that's a Jack and Jill Millie Rock, and we have to make oh, space for that God. in the black community as well. Jack and Jill. We all know black people who can't dance. Come on now. But but again. Be up on her <laughs> about something legitimate, sure. But it's like they, like, people be salivating waiting to make sure. fun of her. Yeah. And Steph clapped back today, right? Yeah, Steph actually put out a tweet, uh, a tweet video or some type of video yesterday. And he basically said, um, so the next time that you guys want to make fun of dancing, or, or maybe, oh, he said, I'll wait for y'all to post a video dancing at y'all's next restaurant opening. How about that? Mm. And then put, right. put the camera over to Aisha, and she was like, Lord. Right. But I think that's so cute that he yes. stands up for and her. Right. Because at the end of the that's day, adorable. she's still a person. She's a young woman. She's only 28. She's my age. She's living her life, and she's just trying to yes. be herself, right? right? Unfortunately, herself does is not the uh, trendy, you know, like, a girl that everybody would want her to fit into as a basketball wife. But she is also a, 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 an incredible uh, CEO of a company that she literally created from just doing what she loves, from cooking. She has a cookware line at Target. She has so many things that she's doing. So it's like, yeah, you can you can talk about her, but why does it always come from this place of like almost hatred for her? I don't know why no. there's just this hatred for Aisha Curry when- Is it because she, she likes skin? Yeah, well, I, I think that part is part of it maybe, but also 
though. Wow. <laughs> because I think she reminds a lot of people of their aunties, like the auntie that you don't talk to, who like always talks about how good her hair, her hair is and all her kids' hair is. <laughs> I, mean, I think oh that, that, that triggers some people. Oh, I think um, you might be right. Wow. But, but I also want to, I do wonder, like, what is the ideal Steph Curry wife? Like, what does Steph Curry's like ideal wife for black Twitter look like? Like, mm. is she, is it, is it that she's darker skinned? It's mm. Aisha Curry, it, to be it, honest. It, it, Cause like, I mean, I think that like, she, if you look at a, if exact you make way, his perfect wife in a lab, it comes out as Aisha Curry. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. you can't have a wife that's like. I mean, actually, you know, I would actually, I would love it if, if, if he's gonna stay in a high yellow journey as well. <laughs> I would actually sort of a high, high yellow, yellow journey. Yellow journey. <laughs> no, but like, can you imagine if he did Maya? Oh, Can you imagine if he was married way, to Maya? He'd definitely be vegan. I'm into that. I'm into, that. You like, I'm into, into a cougar woman. journey. Yes, yeah. you know, like cougar Mulan journey. Rouge, I am never too. forget Not it. Hey, Sorry, my oh, from DMV2 girls. Isn't she on Girls Cruise now? Yeah. yeah. Someone just told me that at the grocery store yesterday. I was like, what wait. What does that show mean? I still don't, <laughs> I don't know. know. Yeah, girls on a cruise. But I will say, I as a person who... I had seen Aisha at plenty of Wizards game. She's a really nice person, and I think she gets a really bad rap for just being sure. who she wants to be. She's young, the free, light skin. Young, yes. free, light skin, but also <laughs> she's yeah. vocal. You this know what I'm saying? And, and it's not like Steph is the coolest person either. Like no, I'm no, sure they're both, Steph's. They're both corny. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So like, and corny let, is let fun. Them, corny is yeah, fun. Yeah, let them be themselves. And most guys want a partner. Yes. I find who's a little bit corny. Whether it's whether it's a male partner I'm, or a female corny, partner. So whether it's a man or a woman, you yeah. saw a partner that's a little bit corny, yeah, you, yeah. you can do corny shit with. And most of us have a corny side. Right. Yeah. We don't necessarily put it out on social media, but her whole life is in, is in public. Right. So you're going to see the cornier dimensions. And maybe. again, Aisha is allowed to be who she wants. We can't sure. praise people for, for putting out their own opinions. If Gabrielle Union tweets something, we're all like, yes, <laughs> Gabby, uh, uh, uh. And Gabby's also opinionated. Gabby's cool, though. Yeah. Gabby's cool as shit, though. Yeah. Gabby's, Gabby's super cool. cool. But what I'm saying is, let's give her the space to be who she wants. And if you disagree with her, fine. But don't try to tear her down. She's still a young woman. And what? she's still a human being. Was yeah. it sturdy, though? All right, anyway. Let's Can somebody just answer my question? Was it sturdy? We said it twice. It was not a sturdy Millie Rose. Not a sturdy Millie But I, I know, know a lot I, of I don't people. know that I can, like, say what a sturdy or because that's subjective. Oh. I think, I think I'm gonna Don't play the line. <laughs> you, you can't play the line no more. You already said it wasn't sturdy. All right, y'all, but we do have to get back to our guest. Here, look at this. These two. We do have to get back to our guests. So, Jeremy, yes, we, we always like to make sure that our guests feel welcomed. We break the ice and things um, with a game. So, we're going to play a quick game of this or that, all right? Okay, it's that. very simple. You Is know, winning or losing? No. Okay, good. It's just your, your, your <laughs> Depends on the question. Yeah. Uh, you, you can't lose on this. You can't can lose. You can take. You just can't lose on this. Okay, okay, yeah. And so, it's basically, you just say the first thing that comes to your mind, okay, all right? Good. You ready? Okay. So, it's Netflix or YouTube? Netflix. Dogs or cats? Dogs. Cardio or weights? Cardio. Cake or pie? Pie. Oh. Mm. Sweet hey, potato pie. I'm from the south. Sweet potato pie. You Withdraw, want it? Got withdraw, it. Your honor. Withdraw your honor. Yeah. As long as it wasn't pumpkin, you might have to get out of here. Yeah. 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 Baby boy or boys in the hood? Baby boy. Big party. Oh. No, baby boy, because uh, Taraji P. Henson. Okay. When Taraji P. Henson sees the future, the past, and the present at the same time while she's getting eaten out, that was like genius. That was like actual genius. But can you who, argue that? He, 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 he made was, a perfect can argument. You I got it. I got that. But he was pun Trey was punching the air. Remember that? <laughs> yeah. Ricky. Those punches weren't sturdy. They were more like. <laughs> oh, now you judge it was sturdy and was <laughs> not now. You still got one brother left, man. <laughs> It was, it was the least hood. It was the, it was the least hood line I've ever heard. Yo, in a hood yo, movie. let me out. Like he had to. Yeah, it it was was right. I want to revisit this because I do. I do love thinking about like Boys in the Hood and like um, a, um, a fucking um, do the right thing. Is he's like beautifully like like the most perfect hotep art like you could ever yes. make. <laughs> it's like, like the politics are like. Not that's all another solid sound, argument, right. but like they oh, are kind of perfectly. Are. They they like they walk the line between like crazy hotep and yes. like hotep that you invite yeah. to dinner, yeah. and it's like it's mainstream hotep. I love, that. I love that. Really I love that. Okay, wait, okay. let's finish the game because okay, we will good, get good, to good. that. that was really good. So, do you like? Would you do a big party or a one on one? Which one do you like better? Big party. Big parties. Yes, me. Gemini. Okay. 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 Football or basketball? Neither. Um, um, American football or soccer? <laughs> I'm uh, um, I don't, not, not yeah, neither. Okay. <laughs> laundry or washing dishes? Oh, God. Uh, I'm sending out my laundry. Yeah, so you wash it. doesn't count. It doesn't count. I'm sending out my laundry. That's what I, that's what I choose. It's a good answer, though. That's a good answer. Yeah. 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 Uh, yes, yeah. It doesn't do you. Okay, do you say data or data? Data. Do you like e-books or hard, copy, hard copies? Hard copies. Passenger or driver? Driver. Twerk or slow dance? Slow dance. Invest in Bitcoin or stocks? Oh, uh, stocks. Yes. Mm -hmm. Very good, you did it! 
<laughs> Although Sorry, I'm shocked that my brain said slow dance over twerk. Maybe it's because, like, at this moment in my life, I'm not twerking. Oh, okay. You know, I realized that, like, my, <laughs> I, like, started doing squats and stuff, and so my ass doesn't move like as it ass should. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm not doing any of the twerking, but I love watching people twerk. Same. I engage it with it more. Yeah, it's a beautiful, yeah. it's a beautiful part of black culture. Yeah. Yes, it is. It's hard. It's hard. Yeah, it it's is. really it's hard. hard. It really oh, my is. God. Yes, yes. And I'm then, watching Megan The Stallion. I'm just like, how can I get, yo, like, also, yo, there's a, gr- okay, there's a very famous young star who I, who was let me follow their finsta and like when she watches this she's, she's gonna know I'm talking about her but this Disney princess can twerk like no other and it's not Zendaya but like she is amazing this girl is like amazing a Disney princess she's a di- she's a Disney girl and when and when it when when she lets people when she gets out of that Disney no. contract I don't want no and she either. lets people know that she can twerk like the yeah. best of them it's gonna be game over I think it's gonna be game over I'm alright yeah 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 yeah. <laughs> at 40 I don't want no, no Disney yeah, right. you, you shouldn't you yeah. shouldn't even be around that channel <laughs> But the yes. fences have really like opened my eyes up to like how many of the kids can actually twerk. Right. Like the, some people hide it. They don't put it on the rent, so they put it on the fence stuff. Yeah, see, and I don't I'm have really a fence stuff. You don't have a fence stuff? No, I want one, but you need oh you need to get one. That's why a lot of the, the real magic happens from yes. celebrities. But um you mentioned Megan, you mentioned these Disney sisters. Uh, there are a lot of black girls who are winning right now. Yeah. And one of the things we do on the show is, or that Gia now does on the show, she has a black girl magic breakdown. Yes, honey. And she tells us yes, what's going honey. on. Okay, so I want to do a special one, and it's going to be so good. And if y'all can tell who I'm about to talk about from my voice. Oh, Condoleezza oh, oh, Rice. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Condoleezza yes. Rice. 60, 60, 60 seconds on the clock, please. Almost, almost. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I have to do a special shout out, special Black Girl Magic breakdown for Beyonce Giselle Knowles. I'm I've been saying. a fan since 1996 when I saw her in the No 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 video. She was switching her knees with Destiny's Child, oh. but it's been an honor to watch her evolution. She literally has taken over the world, and though she struggled through everything in a career, she remains a role model and a standard for excellence as she does everything and wins. So, Lion King is coming out, obviously we know. She did a whole separate album that's <laughs> Afro beats literally through and through. And she said, Disney, you know what? You can pay for that. <laughs> and she has Spirit coming out, which is incredible. But now she's on the verge of becoming an EGOT. She has three Emmy nominations for Homecoming, the most brilliant, incredible thing that we've seen. Outstanding directing, music direction, v- variety special. Those are just the three for her. And then there's three more for the overall, o- uh, overall movie. Coachella. She literally bought the HBCU culture to the front stage, and now she could win a Grammy, Oscar, Emmy. Beyonce, we love you. Thank you for your constant inspiration. And now, we're going to go see The Lion King <laughs> today on July 19th. You buying that tickets? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Hey. But no, I just, it, it's just so dope to see her. If you really think about the girl we met, the girl from the third world of Texas, when she was 17 years old, and yeah. she was just like this girl who looked totally different from what we see now and the evolution we've seen and how excellent she is. I'm just so proud of her. I think we are, don't really get to witness greatness a lot. Mm-hmm. And just watching her, Serena, LeBron, like these people who are living in their greatness and bringing black culture with them. Yeah. I don't think we realize how special that is. And so also, it's really dope to see. people don't talk about with Beyonce and how special she is, and I've been really on this crusade, is that Beyonce is like the first lead singer who's an alto. Yes. That's insane. Like, you know, the fact that she, like, was like, listen, I love Sopranos, yes. but this is about my auto time to shine. Yes! <laughs> like, like, she literally left the point. Sopranos That's a hell of a point. That's another good point. Yeah. I never thought it's like, about that. It's insane. Yeah. And like, there's I, so many black people that we do have to shout out for the Emmy, um, yes. the Emmy categories. Oh, I'm, yes. I'm going to bring it out. But we have several. <laughs> I mean, get it out your phone. Yeah, because uh, Jarrell Jerome. Yeah, Jarrell Jerome for uh, When They See Us. Yes. He did an incredible job. Yes. Uh, played both parts of Corey Wise. Yeah. He was Phenomenal, and um, he deserves you know, all the. Things. Yeah, he, he's he's gonna be he's gonna win an Oscar Absolutely. one day. Absolutely, and Ava, of course, herself got Ava, yes. Yes. Ava Duvernay, the, we, Asante Black, yes. Michael K. Women, Williams, Marsha, Stephanie Blake, Giancarlo Esposito, <laughs> Glenn Turman, Ron <laughs> Cephas Jones, Cicely Tyson, Laverne Cox, Felicia Rashad, Teresa R- Teresa Rivers, RuPaul, Dream Hampton, Tamara Simmons, Trevor Noah, Viola Davis, Nicole Byer, Sterling K. Brown, Billy Porter. Pose, the cast of Pose, Don Cheadle, Anthony Anderson, Nisi Nas, Anjane Ellis, Mahershala Ali, wow. and of course Beyonce. And like, Jameer all- Pond. Oh, wow. What I happened said. there? Mm-hmm. Huh? Jameer Pond. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but we're, I, it was just That's dope That's coming to next see. year. We're yes. going to go Webby. Yeah, it was Webby. like dope to see them. Like, if you, when you watched all the, the categories coming out, how many black people were included this year, yes. it was really dope to watch. But, I mean, I think it's important to mention the fact that, like, less 
black people and people of color were nominated this year than last year. Right. Which is like mm, actually yeah. really, it's like one of those things that I'm constantly trying to remind people like we're making progress, but like we had to keep these, we had to keep everyone in check because mm -hmm. a lot of these white people I think are pulling the wool over our eyes because like they can be like, look how we, look, we put Billy Porter up there this year, y'all. Right. And it's like, it's like, wait a second, but like there are literally no black people nominated for best lead actor in a comedy yes. at all. Right. And you know we funny. Like it's like, right, 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 right. Funny. That's you know, what we do. Like, yeah, yeah. It's like, like yeah. Tracy Ellis Ross like not getting the nomination for like best lead actress on a comedy this year. Or even y uh, Yara Shahidi, who right. I think is killing it on grown mm -hmm. Like I think it's like really did. insane. Um, and moreover, like looking at a show like Pose, wherein like mm -hmm. the person who got, who got the nomination was a cisgendered, um, a cisgendered like Broadway star, right. yeah. and not one of the like many unknown, Poses. amazing yeah. trans actresses yeah. that like are mm. peppering the show and like that the show centers. Mm. Like, and again, Billy Porter is amazing. I want Billy Porter to get all the things, all but like also yeah. want MJ Rodriguez to get the things. Yes, and absolutely. Also, they put India Moore on every magazine in the world this year. Yeah. Right, and what happened with India? <laughs> yeah, like, you're right. Like, so I think there's a lot of things that like there's a lot of amazing things that happen, especially in the um, fields of. Um, like documentary variety and in um, limited series. But I think that like when we look at like uh, the other places like comedy and drama on television, I think that like there has been like a huge whitening that we like haven't exactly noticed. Yeah. Um, or at least like a positioning of white, of white dramas and white comedies in such a way that like have um, not that, that hasn't been equitable for black yeah. mm. and brown drama. I love comedy. you I, yeah. already. I don't know. I, I just want to let you know. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I do like the fact that we're stepping outside of the box just from the normal narrative of what blackness looks like. Yes. And we're getting way more diverse. And, you know, speaking of diversity and blackness, uh, you have this play that um, has been called Amazing thus far. I think we were caught off guard by the name. Yeah. Uh, because, slave play. Yeah, it's called Slave, slave Play, play y'all. Yeah. And, um, you know, I want, I want you to tell us about it because I think from just hearing the name, uh, it's a little overwhelming, but yeah. I'm sure there are layers underneath that will help sewing when it yeah. has to be sewn. I mean, well, for me, it's like, it was very, it's so, it's so funny that that's been the lightning rod for people because it was like, I'm such a jokester. I'm someone who like jokes so much mm -hmm. that like for me, like titling a play slave play, like it's such an obvious like call out mm -hmm. of like a certain type of play that a lot, or a certain type of media that a lot of black writers have like been called to write or like right. to put onto our stages and then get, get produced and get um, exalted a lot in our things. So I was like, I was like, oh, like, I guess like the entry point for blackness in our, like in our, unconscious and our entertainment unconscious is like the slave play yeah. like the slave mm -hmm. the slave narrative right mm -hmm. and i was like well what does that mean for me like how like why would i want to do that um and a big part of it is the fact that uh i i know for a fact that like the first time black people had agency in the theater, the first time they were able to tell their stories were plays like In Dahomey, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And In Dahomey is like a 1922 Broadway, uh, Broadway show by, Cook, by Ship and Cook. And they, they were like stars of the Broadway stage, like the richest black men in the country. Mm. And they were rich black men because they were making minstrel shows for white people. Right. So they were creating like, they were, mm. they were shaping out uh, st stereotypes and narratives um, about their bodies and the bodies of other black people for white people to consume. Mm -hmm. But they were at least like, as you know, Hattie McDaniel said, like I'd rather play a play a maid than be a maid. Like they were in that Got sort of you. like dichotomy, okay. Okay. and I felt like you know I have this very privileged position where I'm the I was I grew up around all the richest white kids in Virginia, like in like Southwestern Virginia. Mm -hmm. And I learned very early, I could tell like all those people, like shut the fuck up. Like I have more privilege than you. Like right. I got I got like some privilege by proxy. Okay. <laughs> and um, okay. privilege by proxy like made it very easy for me to be like, okay, cool. Like if I'm gonna make something called slave play, I'm gonna make something that like can't be consumed by whiteness. Mm -hmm. You know that like it's finally a black person owning these stereotypes and these ideas and these, these histories and like forcing them down the throat of the people who think they have power mm -hmm. and maybe like exploding it a bit or like giving them a bit of poison. And also, but in, in, in that way, like, like not, like, I'm not, I'm, like, it's a play. It's not a rebellion, right? So I'm not going to be like, and it's going to be this rebellious act where, like, all the black people are cheering in the aisles. Well, what, is, what, is, what is the plot of it, though? Tell us. Well, I mean, I, 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 I have this, like, allergy to plot. You know, mm. I think that we're in this moment where people demand to know everything about everything before they engage with mm -hmm. it. And I'm like, right. well, that takes away the whole, like, experience mm. of, like, watching it. Like, people, people do you, can you imagine how pissed everyone would be if you were like, tell me the plot of all of Game of Thrones before I see it? Right. Like, what's the surprise in Game of Thrones? Right. Right. You know, it's like, well, the, the, I can't tell you the surprise in Game of Thrones because, like, that ruins the entire experience. Gotcha. So but what's the context of it, then, at least? Well, the context is that it takes place on a uh, plantation called the McGregor Plantation. And over the course of the play, you watch, 
watch three, uh, or you watch four couples mm. um, with intersecting narratives uh, process the ways in which, like, the antebellum chattel slavery history that our country has mm -hmm. at its core has never left, no matter how much we want to forget it, no matter how far away you move from Martinsville, Virginia, or Richmond, Virginia, or any of the other places that have chattel slavery in its, like, active history. I mean, I went to a high school that had a graduation party on a plantation. Like, wow. my classmate family still lived on the plantation and that's where we had our after party for graduation yeah. and um so like i grew up like having to see a plantation all the time mm -hmm. and yeah i moved to chicago i moved to new york i moved to la and i was around black people white people all sorts of people who like were able to be like well you know like that was so long ago like <laughs> that's not my journey no but like when you touch my hair like that like yeah. that was like that was indebted to like mm. your great 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 grandfather mm -hmm. who felt like he could like hold the arm and do it. Yeah. so i I, so I wanted to write a play that was about how like we like we 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 sort of just like um, you know emancipated slavery mm -hmm. and never put any sort of solve or any sort of um uh, any sort of ointment on the wound that we had left. Right. So now that there's just like this like festering scar that we just walk around like we don't have. Okay. So I wanted to write a play that was about that. So wow. is it is it um Here what would it. you would you call it like a a drama a comedy? I mean element? I think that it's I think that like. The f there's nothing I can ever do that won't have that I I can't make something that won't make me laugh or won't make my mom Got laugh you. <laughs> because like when I when I first started writing plays I was so into specifically a lot of like black women who were writing experimental plays mm -hmm. so like Adrian Kennedy Susan Lloyd Parks like all of these like people who were like getting at the like the the dirt and like guts of like blackness right. through like expressivity mm -hmm. and so I would give my mom these plays like mom like look at this thing I wrote like it's so cool and she'd be like uh what is this <laughs> <laughs> and she was like, can you give me something like that's a little more, like, how, consumable? Mm. How, how do you... So if I were your manager or yeah. your agent and I wanted to get you to Broadway, yeah, I wouldn't say, let's write a non-linear experimental play about the intersections of race and class on a plantation in 2019. Yeah. Right? Because that doesn't seem like the recipe for Broadway success. No. One, did you have any fear about that? Well, I didn't write the play. It's, it's literally so funny to me because, like, we were talking about Aisha Curry and like, right. how people just like, they, like go. I like literally sometimes I'm, like Black Twitter, like a certain portion of Black Twitter, it's just like that. Like I can't stand him because like I've done nothing and like people just have decided I did everything oh. right. Like I didn't write. I was like at Yale not because I was like I'm gonna go to Yale School of Drama and I'm gonna be the like black playwright who like takes over Broadway one day. That was literally never in the cards for me. Mm -hmm. I went to Yale because it was the only school that would pay me to go to school for three years. Mm -hmm. Like I literally, you go if you go to Yale for playwriting, you get to go in for free and they pay you to go there. Wow. So I was like, cool. Like I'll go to. I, I dropped out of undergrad, wow. right? And like for me, I I lived in LA for six years, sort of being an assistant to a bunch of people and sort of chasing a dream that I could be like the black Lena. Dunham. And mm. then, like, Issa Rae got there first. I was like, <laughs> well, um, I guess Issa's doing that. They're <laughs> doing this. No one gives a fuck about what I'm writing, so I'm just gonna go somewhere else and do something else. And I, I, and I love experimental theater, so I'm gonna make theater, make my own theater company, and go to Berlin. Like, that was the dream. Wow. So I, like, was like, when I got into Yale, so many of my classmates were like, my dream is to work at this institutional theater, that institutional theater. And I was like, I don't want to write like weird shit. So I wrote a play called Slave Play that, I th that could be done by me that was like, that had an overhead of only the eight actors in it. It was a play that like, it said like, it, could, it would be really cool if this looked like a plantation, but this can also happen on just like, a, on this carpet right here, mm -hmm. with just eight bodies. Mm. And so I wrote it with that intention. And, and it's, it's one of those things that you read about all the time where it's like you write this thing that you think, well, no one will care about, and then it becomes your pop album, mm -hmm. you know? Right. And like, I like sent it to one person, one friend, and this friend was like, oh, this is a thing. I was like, you think so? Right. That's so weird. Like, mm, I don't know. And then all these theaters wanted to do it. And like, of course, I had like questions about why they wanted to do it, what it meant that they wanted to do it. Um, but like, I think that like, I still was just like, oh, well, like the reason this is working is because it's intersecting with like the things that like actually are in our gut, which is sex. Like sex and like our the, the desire and mm. uh, trauma mm -hmm. are the things that are the closest to us, the things we can't undo inside of our head. Mm. That's why I think like the Me Too movement like had uh, took over our country so deeply and, and was so important for us to, to think about because it intersected with like our 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 country's like um, inability to discuss both like the trauma of like gender difference. 
difference and also the trauma of desiring and desiring differently. And I think that like when those two things intersected, like it took over our imaginations and like we had to be a part of it. And my play was doing the same thing in, in the sense that it was like looking at and and also it's like it can't be unsaid that like my play was like uh, being produced for the first time during. Like the first time the play was produced at Yale, it was the week after Lupita put out her Yale letter about right. like um, Weinstein. Like that was the same week, so it was like there's a lot of heightened emotions around everything inside of this play. Yeah. Right. Um, and so I think that like when my play, looking at like the scar of like race in our in our country, like the unhealed scar of race in our country, intersecting that with like how desire works in our country and how we want to feel like our desire frees us from some. Um, so from our privileges or from our um, the things that shape like 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 black white whatever when you are a man and you love a woman you think that like that can like um, that can like free you of like all of the traumas of maleness and it's not true mm -hmm. like when women look at men they're still like I, like you you embody a history of like right. violence against my body whether you want to or not so when you raised your voice at me like that that took me back to this like fear I've held forever mm -hmm. even though when he was just like I'm talking to you like a person I'm raising my voice in a way that you thought you were raising your voice. Right. And so I was looking at how that... That's a hell of a point. Yeah, right. and so I was looking at how those histories could be embodied in race and maybe tell, give black people a thing that they can point to when they're trying to explain to, like, the white institutions in their life, the white bodies in their life, like, why the things they're doing remind them of, like, like why microaggression feels as Fuck, like, like something as, as small as even a, a positive microaggression being like, oh my God. You're so articulate. I, yeah, yeah, I love how articulate you are. It's like that reminds me of being fucking called a house, like being called back into the house and like yeah. taken away from my family. Because when you tell me that, when you tell me that I have a voice that's specifically perfect in like contrast to like my cousin right there, is that's that's you literally yeah, you're, separating you're me the from elite, the people that, the are, elite that are my people. Yeah. Exactly. Right. Yeah. So, so how do you. Jesus. How do you. How do you push back against some of the controversy you've got. And this place is already controversial. Yeah. First of all, why, why why are people, what's the biggest critique of it? What's the biggest pushback against Well, I mean, I think that like the thing that really sucks, and I talked about this in an interview I did with Tanya Pinkin with American Theater Magazine, was that um, there was an image. An Im the first image that people mm -hmm. were able to see of the play was an image that was taken by the New York Times. And uh, again, I don't know, um, when you do, one of the things people don't understand about doing a play is that like the images that come, especially in the major newspapers, are not images that you yourself right. are in control of. Right. Um, and one of the first images that was taken was uh, it, from this like bevy of pictures that the New York Times took, and they did a profile of me. And for some reason, they decided to run with a picture that neither me nor my director nor Tiana would have ever wanted to run. Mm. Um, and that picture to was a meme. You know, and a me and a, a me it was immediately a meme. It what was, a, was the yeah. picture? It was a picture of Tiana um, dressed as a slave with her tongue out, twerking, and the man, Paul, who plays the overseer, coming through the door and looking at her. And, the, and people decided that this was, like, you, because you can tell an entire story with one picture. Exactly. Yeah, you know, so people, so people wrote, an enti wrote entire <laughs> stories, not novellas, about, like, the, the violence of this image and, like, what the play was without knowing Contents. what the play was. Mm -hmm. You know, and I, and I think that what was important was that, like, it allowed me to reflect on, like, questions that people were asking around, like, what does it mean to be a black artist creating these things inside of a historically white institution? Um, and, 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 like, and why? You know, and so while I was really upset and it was hurtful and it was like not fun to have people like sort of like violently attack me, Tiana and Robert, because we were the three people who were attacked the most. There were like seven other people involved in like the actual acting of the play. And Tiana was the person that like was the only was the focal point of all of the ire, which I think is like completely sexist and like, mm. like, you know, Massage Noir out there wazoo came at that woman. And the fact that she was able to do our play the entire time and, like, came with a smile on her face every day and flowers for everyone all the time is, like, beyond me. Because I probably would have been broken by it. Um, because I was broken by it, but I was just the writer. I didn't have to go on stage every day. You know, so my brokenness got to be, like... At least like, in, in, right. in, the, in the background. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Yes. And, like, my, I felt like a lot of my critique was a critique that, like, intersected with a lot of... And, like, again, like, people were going to be like, oh, look at him, he's scapegoating. But it's true. I, it was... The homophobic attacks against like me and like my my like who why I would make this play were so entrenched um, that I think that like that image intersected with like a lot of different violences. Um, even though I think some of the people who are more rational people had questions that like that image like made, it, 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 kind of, it legitimately conjured things. Yes, yes. This is a question of how people make sense exactly. of it, but also how much grace they're willing to give you as the artist exactly. for what your intentionality was. Exactly. I, I think that's super important. But I know, no, I just wanted to know uh, what, what with this play, what's your message to 
white people? Like, what are white people who want to come see this play? What are they going to take away from this? Because I think during slave narratives, white people have a tendency after the movies to look and go, I'm so sorry. Yes. I, 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 I didn't mean, that wasn't me. Mm-hmm. You know, they, there's a guilt, there's a sense of guilt. So is there, what's the message, overall message gonna be geared towards uh, people who are coming to see this? Well, I mean, I think, oh God, and I, again, I don't wanna, um, I think that something that's very important to know is that like the, one of the major things that everyone leaves to play hearing mm-hmm. is a line that said to one of the main white characters, which is that you are a virus. Mm. And I think that like, there's mm. something that lives inside of the white audience when they leave there, where they really hear that. And, and yet like, that's not necessarily my concern mm-hmm. because like, I've always said that like, my favorite playwrights are playwrights that I think are writing to themselves and they're writing to themselves with such clarity and such loudness. They're speaking to themselves so loudly mm-hmm. that like, even if you're in the other room, you can hear what they're saying. Mm-hmm. So like, I will never be a black woman, right? right. Um, so there are things about Susan Laurie Parks's a or Susan Laurie Parks is in the blood mm-hmm. that I will never truly know on a bodily level right. because and, and I think even you as a woman who's not Susan Laurie Parks who's not right. a woman with dreads who's not a woman who is a poet like you might not ever feel those things as directly as she feels them because she's talking to herself mm-hmm. yeah. but even if you're standing in that next room you'll hear it mm-hmm. and there and even if you're standing in a room two rooms down like the, the great plays are plays that you can hear you can hear something of, like, even if you're four rooms down. Right. Right. And what, I, what I'm hoping is that um, the audience that I'm most excited about having in the room, which are, like, younger audiences and blacker audiences yes. and browner audiences, audiences who, yeah. Yeah, yeah. audiences who feel like um, a lot of these traumas on a daily basis and have been in the grime and dirt, like, reading the Sadia Hartman, reading the Fred w- w- uh, w- Wilkerson, reading the L.H. Stallings, and, like, also, like, having con- conversations where they, like, aren't like freaked out by Tana Hesey Coates saying that we need to have reparations. Like people who understand these things right. deeply, like they're in the room right next to my play where I'm talking to myself. Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of the older white audience that like maybe doesn't have these conversations as fluently are two or three doors down. Gotcha. But I, th- I hope they're still hearing something. Right. But right. I can't be in control of what they're hearing because like they're not in that room with me. When and I'm it's okay that you didn't write it for them. Exactly. Right, it's right, okay. Right, right. It's, yeah, it's o- totally okay. Yes. Yeah. It's like the, the Toni Morrison question. Yes. 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 You know, she's like, I didn't write it. You know what I mean? I didn't write it for you yeah. and I won't ever feel crazy because no one's ever asked a white writer why didn't you, you include yeah. white people? Black yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. totally yes. okay. Before we go, because I want to read some comments from the week because okay. yeah, this show is written for black folks. Yes. Yeah. Shall we? We want to watch. But, Shall we? You know, it's for y'all. So we want to make sure that you all uh, get your comments read and those of you who watched and shared our interview with Bernie Sanders, we want to thank you because you all had a lot of comments. Am Freema tweeted, I just want to say these two did an excellent job with this interview. As a Bernie supporter, I've watched so many interviews with him where the questions were just vapid and shallow. I actually learned something from this interview. Aww. So thank you. Oh, Yay. thank you. And, and, and just don't forget, it was G and I on set, but Jameer also, uh, although he was on a remote <laughs> island with a better life than us, also sent a really- I was at a wedding. But, but he Which sent an important question. St. Martin. That's, or no. so he says, we don't really know. <laughs> but, but his question was really important. It actually got a really important uh, online yeah. conversation uh, going about uh, voting and, and, and whether or not people should stay home. So Jameer deserves a lot of that credit as well. If you guys. Uh, D. Burkhiff tweeted, great interview. It wasn't rushed and it gave the conversation more depth and nuance. Black Coffee Live is a type of content I like to see under the BET banner. Well, Bernie Sanders does a good job explaining the disparity within the disparity. And over on YouTube, BH5496 loved how the senator showed his personal side. He wrote, the idea of Bernie Sanders aggressively batting down an eight-year-old's basketball shots <laughs> is very funny to me. He beat uh, his grandson yeah. in, in basketball. <laughs> and, and one more from Fuji1973, uh, who wrote, amazing you? interview. You guys Not have me time. hooked. Great guests. I'll be mad when I can't watch it live, but that's okay. You know what? We love when you watch it live, but we love when you watch it at all. So Absolutely. we have a YouTube channel where you can watch any episode, old or new. Uh, make sure you sc- subscribe right now on YouTube.com slash BET Black Coffee. That way you never miss an episode. Jeremy, thank you so much for thank joining you. us. Yes, thank you, you are this everything. Is amazing. Also, watching our skin on this, black people definitely know how to lie here. Thank you. Oh, we thank didn't you. do it ourselves. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. <laughs> but we will be checking out this play. Great. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, Where we all go? Yeah. yeah. I think we all should go. Let's I make really that do. Yeah. Let's make well, that I can tell you this. Rihanna texted me and told me she's coming, <gasps> which is insane. So, so, no, 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 no. Yeah. Look at your face right now. I can't tell you which night she's coming, but she's which, which night she's not coming? <laughs> <laughs> Most of the nights that, not, that are not opening night. <laughs> yeah. You're Thank a you, psychopath. Sir. Yes. I uh, just want to...
Can we go? Look at my look at my last Instagram post about the play. She's the first comment. It's insane. You're blushing right now. I'm not blushing. You don't care about Rihanna. I don't even like her. You, are you 14? Are you right, like, she goes to a different school. <laughs> Jesus. Everybody, make sure you follow us on Facebook and Twitter and tune in weekdays at 10 a.m. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> at 10 a.m. Eastern. Right now, we're going to keep the conversation going with Jeremy O. Harris on our after show. It's called Black Coffee to Refill. Thanks for watching. So, the opening day, you said. No, 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 no. Don't be a creep. Oh, my God.